Hello welcome to Nautical Navigators today in this video we will be discussing about polar code and few exams related questions. What is the polar code? The polar code became mandatory under both SOLIS and MARPOL on January 1, 2017, and applies to all ships operating in polar waters, regardless of their flag state or size and related amendments to the International Convention for the Safety of Life at Sea, SOLAS, Chapter 14, Safety Measures for Ships Operating in Polar Waters. What is the objective of Polar Code? The aim of the Polar Code is to promote the safety of navigation and the protection of the polar environment by setting out minimum standards for ships operating in the harsh and challenging polar waters of the Arctic and Antarctic. The Code addresses a wide range of issues, including ship design and construction, equipment, crew training, operational procedures, and environmental protection measures. Types of ships and ice as per Polar Code. Category a ship means a ship designed for operation in polar waters in at least medium first-year ice, which may include old ice inclusions. Category B ship means a ship not included in category A, designed for operation in polar waters in at least thin first-year ice, which may include old ice inclusions. Category C ship means a ship designed to operate in open water or in ice conditions less severe than those included in categories A and B. The first year ice means sea ice of not more than one winter growth developing from young ice with thickness from 0.3 meters to 2.0 meters. Medium first-year ice means first-year ice of 70 cm to 120 cm thickness. Thin first-year ice means first-year ice 30 cm to 70 cm thick. Old ice means sea ice which has survived at least one summer's melt. Typical thickness up to 3 meters or more. It is subdivided into residual first-year ice, second-year ice and multi-year ice. Polar Code is divided into two parts 1a. Mandatory Provision on Safety MEASURES-1b. Recommendation on SAFETY-2a. Mandatory Provision on Pollution Prevention 2b. Recommendation on Pollution Prevention. Part 1a of the Polar Code for Ships Operating in Polar Waters 1. Carrying a Polar Ship Certificate on board, a ship must obtain a Polar Ship Certificate issued by the flag state or an authorized organization before operating in Polar Waters. Point 2. Developing and carrying a Polar Water Operation Manual, PWOM, on board, the PWOM should contain information on the ship's operational capabilities and limitations in Polar Waters, and provide guidance on safe and environmentally sound operations. Three, carrying the right training certificate from the respective flag state on board as required by the Polar Code and STCW, the ship's crew must have appropriate training and certification as required by the Polar Code and the International Convention on Standards of Training, Certification, and Watchkeeping for Seafarers, STCW. Point four. Performing voyage planning before every voyage to polar waters following the instructions in the PWOM as required in Polar Code. The ship's crew must perform voyage planning before every voyage to polar waters, following the instructions in the PWOM, to ensure safe and efficient operations in polar conditions.
In part 2 A of the Polar Code relates to pollution prevention, and specifically addresses the need for ships operating in polar waters to update their onboard documentation to ensure compliance with requirements from MARPOL Chapters I, II, IV, and V. This includes measures such as ensuring proper handling and discharge of oil, chemicals, sewage, and garbage, as well as taking into account the unique environmental conditions of polar waters. The Polar Code also requires ships to have a Polar Ship Certificate and a Polar Water Operation Manual, and to follow operational and safety requirements specific to polar waters. What is the Polar Ship Certificate? The Polar Ship Certificate confirms that a ship is compliant with the safety requirements in Part 1A of the Polar Code. To obtain this certificate, the ship owner must conduct an operational assessment, develop a Polar Water Operational Manual specific to the ship, arrange for the ship to be surveyed to ensure compliance with the relevant requirements of the Polar Code, and apply to the flag administration or authorized representative for the certificate. The certificate is issued by the vessel's flag administration or its authorized representatives, and is required for solace ships operating in polar waters. What does the Polar Ship Certificate require? A proper voyage plan must be conducted, and the vessel must be operated within the capabilities and limitations stated on its Polar Ship Certificate. Monitoring snow and ice accumulation on the ship and keeping safety equipment, escape routes, and survival craft clear of snow and ice accumulation is also important. In addition, Crew members must be trained in the use of personal and group survival equipment and in the procedures and equipment described in the Polar Water Operational Manual relevant to their assigned duties. What is Polar Water Operational Manual? The purpose of the Polar Water Operational Manual PWOM, is to provide ship-specific procedures and instructions for operating a Solus certified ship in polar waters. It is intended to inform the ship's master and crew about the ship's capabilities, limitations, and essential operating procedures to protect the ship, its crew and passengers, and the polar environment. The Polar Water Operational Manual must address each hazard identified as relevant in the ship's Polar Code Operational Risk Assessment, and it must include specific procedures for normal operations, encountering conditions that exceed the ship's capabilities, incidents in polar waters, and operating in ice. The Polar Water Operational Manual must contain procedures for voyage planning in polar waters, how to assess ice conditions and determine whether it is safe for the ship to proceed, how to receive and use ice forecasts, how to operate equipment and maintain system functions during freezing temperatures, topside icing and sea ice, what to do if the ship encounters ice or cold temperatures that exceed its design capability, and what to do in case of an emergency including how to contact emergency response providers. Questions related to examinations. What are polar water? As per the Polar Code, polar waters refer to the areas north of 60 degrees north latitude and south of 60 degrees south latitude. These areas include the Arctic Ocean and the surrounding seas, as well as the waters surrounding Antarctica, including the Southern Ocean. What are equipments required for high-latitude polar waters? 
two radars, two gyro compass, two echo sounders, each with an independent transducer OR, one echo sounder with two separate independent transducers. As per Solus Chapter 5 20 seconds, a clear view astern. Two searchlights with two spare lamps. A weather facsimile receiver and a spare antenna. One GNSS compass. What is the first equipment you will change when going to polar water? A GNSS compass. Unlike the polar area magnetic compass, which will not settle until the vessel has been steered on the same course for a long time due to weaker horizontal components, the GNSS compass does not experience the same limitation. The gyro is not usable at the poles because the rotation speed of the Earth is slower, and as latitude increases, the error in the gyro's readings also increases. What all equipments don't work at higher latitude? A gyro and magnetic compass, GPS would be affected above 55 degrees latitude due to HDOP, as there are no satellite orbits directly overhead beyond that latitude under SATC. What is a GNSS compass? The GNSS compass is a navigation and heading solution that combines GNSS, Global Navigation Satellite System, and INS, Inertial Navigation System, technology. It provides accurate GPS-based heading using dual antennas that are not affected by magnetic interference. This allows for accurate heading even during GNSS outages of up to 20 minutes. The system uses a pair of antennas spaced about 50 centimeters apart to detect the phase difference in the carrier signal from a GNSS satellite. By knowing the positions of the satellite, the antenna, and the phase difference, the orientation of the antennas can be calculated. How to decide limiting latitude in great circle sailing? There are many factors to consider when determining the most suitable route for a ship, such as bad weather, cold temperatures, and heavy sea conditions. Navigation equipment may have limitations over certain latitudes, and stability issues and load line zones must also be considered. Up-to-date ice reports are important, as heavy weather is more likely at higher latitudes, and there may be navigational hazards such as poor visibility and UKC. Additionally, the agreement between the charter party and the ship owner, as well as marine warranty insurance, should also be considered. I hope you like the video and let me know in the comments section what all topics should I cover, and for more educational videos. Kindly like subscribe and share this channel for more and keep supporting.